What's up, everybody? I'm David Hain. Welcome to episode 70 of the A to D from Addict to Disciple podcast. I'd like to give a big shout out to our new listeners from Andalusia, Spain. That brings our reach up to 49 countries. For all my listeners, if you would like one-on-one counseling or to launch or join a group using the podcasts, or the From Ashes to Destiny curriculum, please send me a message by email at davidfromatod at gmail.com or go to my website, www.fromatod.org and click on the contact page. When we come back, we'll get into this episode entitled, Can You Handle the Truth? Welcome back to episode 70, entitled, Can You Handle the Truth? Today's episode will be another group session. I want to thank all of the listeners for your feedback, asking for more groups and sending in ideas for the group sessions. I'm honored to have the same friends in recovery from the U.S., South Africa, and Australia sharing this time in the group with us. I'll keep them anonymous but I'll be saying their answers as if we were having a group meeting in person. Here's the topic for today's group session. You ready, guys? How has fear of people's reaction to your truth kept you from opening up? Sometimes there's too much truth in this world and not enough understanding. And did you feel, if I told you the truth, you would have tried to do something about it. Ben, you look eager to start us off, so the floor is yours. Thanks, David. For me, ever since September 18th, 2005, in that homeless shelter, that's when the Lord, through a preacher, pretty much miraculously intervened in the path of destruction I was on using heroin and meth. I've not been able to stop telling people what the Lord did on that day since that day. And that was 16 or so years ago. However, what I have learned after pushing towards two decades of sobriety now is that not everybody wants to hear my truth. What's even stranger to me is I've discovered that other people who have made it out of whatever they were in don't seem to want to talk about their truth journey with anyone. In some circles, I've even been labeled this way. Well, there's Ben. He's probably going to talk about prison, drugs, and sobriety. Well, I've even found out on the side that some people have made fun of me when I share. And I get it. Not everybody is ready to talk about their truth or to hear what your truth is, and that's okay. I've got a slogan that I live by when it comes to stuff like this. Here it is. Go where you're celebrated, not tolerated. There's a Bible verse that kind of wraps up what I'm trying to say. And it comes from the the book of Revelation. It says... We are made overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. I'd like to highlight that word, overcomer. When we share the truth about where we've been, how we got out of those pits, where we are and where we are headed, there's a sense of being an overcomer that just wells up inside of you. Every time I hear someone share their testimony or their truth, I get that feeling of being an overcomer myself. So the bottom line, I believe, is that true freedom comes by opening up about what you're going through and telling the truth will really set you free. But be prepared knowing that some people aren't ready to hear it and some people don't even know what to do about it once you share it. But People are fickle. The same people that love you today will possibly hate you tomorrow. So don't let their opinion 
or lack thereof, keep you quiet. Shaw sure, Ben, that's so true. People can be fickle, and there is power in your testimony. And the truth is, Ben, you are an overcomer. Adam, what do you think about these questions for today? David, at times the fear of judgment and other reactions made me hold back on how I tell people who I didn't know how they'd react that I was an addict. I still have fear expressing certain things with family because I feel if I did, I'd end up backsliding with them rather than encouraging them towards recovery. Sometimes, to protect others, I have had to withhold the truth from people and make the situation sound better than what it was. When I get the feeling that what I'm going to say will hurt them in any way that's painful, I, I just hold back. And it makes me hurt inside because I hate to lie to them. Wow, Adam, I, I fully can hear your dilemma there and understand that, that sort of double-edged sword of holding back because it might hurt other people and then hurting inside when you have to be less than truthful. Dante, what do you think about this? Well, David, I don't typically have a problem with opening up, as you guys in group know. But what the fear has taught me is I have to learn to whom I open up and when. I think vulnerability is necessary for growth and healing in one's life. But I do think to some extent you have to be guarded as to whom you share that with. I don't mean being guarded at all times, but rather being patient with yourself and being wise about how and to whom you share your thoughts. When those thoughts about your truth come to mind, it is something you are very passionate about. And typically, passion can overflow into just verbal exercise. It's easy for me to verbally share. Thankful for a caring group of people, such as my friends and church family, with whom I can share my struggles and receive support and, importantly, feedback. Yes, that's spot on, Dante. We all need that support. And when we're vulnerable, we need to have the wisdom to know when we're in a safe environment and around people that it is safe to share with. Eddie, what are your thoughts on these questions? David, fortunately for me, I had no problem opening up and testifying about what I had been through and how I managed to overcome my addiction. At times, my wife would be so embarrassed and would even ask me not to talk about it to everyone. But if someone asked why I don't drink or smoke, it was game on. For me, no cold turkey, no medication, no rehab. They needed to hear that it was not my strength, but the undeserving grace of the king. And that's what I never hold back from sharing. Sure, Eddie, I can hear that same passion to share that Dante also mentioned. Harry, I see you smiling at what Eddie shared. What do you have to say about this topic? David, in the beginning, it was more the embarrassment of people knowing of my past habits and life's challenges with addiction that held me back from speaking openly and honestly. Society always likes to judge and talk down to people like us when we are at our lowest and we're trying to get back up on our feet. With me specifically, there was a lot of ridicule when I told people I quit or stopped drugs because of my long previous history of continuous relapse. People normally spoke negatively to me when they heard I stopped. Words like, let's see how long it lasts, or 
he's not capable of staying clean. Hey, David, nobody understood me or what I was going through, but everyone spoke to me as if they had first-hand knowledge and had a degree in drug counseling or psychology. The only way I got over my fear and embarrassment was by talking about my addictions and what helped me. The more I spoke, the more confident I became, and my heart weighed heavily for the one still suffering, who still refused to listen to someone who understands what they are going through. Yes, that's so true, Harry. We do need the courage to open up for the first time, and even if people don't believe us, we all need to know that our confidence will grow the more we speak the truth. Gary, what do you think about this? David, in my addiction, I chose isolation and having little contact with people was my basic instinct as I know how quickly people will judge when they become aware of what is going on. Being a functioning alcoholic, running a full-time business, which involved liaising with many people during the day, it was vital that I maintained a sober, clear-thinking facade to be productive and, importantly, retain customers for a repeat business. I became very good at pulling the wool over everyone's eyes because I was very productive and earned good money. It even became a source of amusement and a sense of achievement to me, knowing that I managed to fool everyone while the money was coming in and while I was simultaneously drinking two bottles of whiskey every day. You see, people are quick to judge and they love to parade truth when it suits them, not realizing really that anybody can fall and that just a little understanding could really go a long way toward recovery. I also mostly avoided close family for the simple reason that one or two would want to do something about my drinking at a time when I was comfortable in my cocoon of addiction, while ironically, I was crying inwardly for help. In conclusion, instead of judging, we should make the time to listen to an addict with an open mind. Good words, Gary. Just a little understanding as people listen go a long way towards our personal recovery. Charlie, how would you like to wrap things up for us? Well, David, honestly, I have always been a guy to share how I'm feeling and what's going on in my life with those who are around me. It's always been something that helped me find those who really care and those who really don't. In recovery, once I became able to speak and share, I was again willing to share it all openly, I think. Whether in a meeting, support groups at home, at church or at work, I shared exactly what I was dealing with and how I felt. In do doing so, it has created fear for my past job as I was treated like someone who didn't deserve respect and trust. I was treated like someone who has a problem, not someone recovering from a problem. I got treated better when I was showing up drunk for work than I did sharing that I was in recovery and working on my mental health. Early on, sharing openly in a meeting setting was hard because I was forced to listen to all the comments and advice from everyone after the meeting. They all wanted to fix me. I didn't understand that only certain responses were meant for me, so some of the suggestions or comments were very hard to process. What it did do was help me find absolute love. It helped me see that a lot of people do really care. I also learned that the people I wanted in my life weren't exactly who God had meant for me to have in my life. I learned that people would fail me over and over again 
because I was looking to the wrong people to share my feelings with. There is a fear now of sharing when I'm going through a negative mind space or feel like I can't go on because others may see me as a spiritual advisor or see me as a godly man who should be delivered from bad days. But I feel the truth is the truth and by sharing it, I have a chance to give it away and move on. But the conversation's hard when people say, you're always sharing uplifting heavenly things and today you sound like you're going through hell. You know, that just makes it harder to pick up the phone and call the people that I know will be there to support me. Then they're sharing with family. I don't want to put any more hurt on them, so it's a fear to scar them any further or to seem like I'm bragging when I'm doing well. It's a bit of mental tug of war at times, but I think the time spent in prayer and meditation has restored some of my mental health, which makes it easier to deal with things. I use the Word of God and he tells me not to fear. So I feel my truth is my truth and it should be shared that it just might help one person. Charlie, everybody was nodding in agreement with you. We all remember people would treat us like we have a problem, but we were sharing how far we've come in our recovery. That reaction alone often fuels relapse as we can get angry that no one believes us. And that really brings us to a good closing. And I think I'd like to end with what we started out with. And that's this statement. Sometimes there's too much truth in this world and not enough understanding. Thanks for listening to this episode of the A to D from Addict to Disciple podcast. If you enjoy these podcasts, please share the link with your friends. And if you'd like to support our work with people caught in the snare of addiction, homelessness, or incarceration, just click on the support link in this episode's description. Your donation of any amount could change a life. Tune in Monday for our next episode. And as always, stay safe and stay strong.